I used to work the graveyard shift at a Dunkin' Donuts. For those of you who don't know what a Dunkin' Donuts is, it's basically a donut chain that sells coffee, breakfast items, and of course, donuts. This brings me to a little over a month ago when our location was recently selected to become 24 hours. A lot of other establishments would maintain a 24 hour drive through window, but ours was fully open. I'll be honest, it was interesting to see the new types of customers who would come in during these hours. We of course had the hipsters and goths who had nothing better to do at 3am than to sit in a coffee shop drinking one cup for an hour. There were the occasional overworked businessmen and interns, trying desperately to finish that last minute presentation. A couple weeks ago I had encountered a new type of customer though he is very difficult to describe. Have you ever met someone that makes you nervous for some unknown reason? Well, at around 2.30 a.m., a man walked in with a large overcoat, with a collar pulled up, and a black beanie on his head. What struck me as odd first was the lack of people in our lobby. Normally at this time, we'd have the goths huddled in the corner cursing the system or something. But the entire store was empty aside from this man, myself, and my manager who was in the back, probably sleeping or something. After this person walked in, I thought it had to be a homeless man trying to escape the cold and possibly seek out a hot cup of pity. But then I saw his face. He was somewhat gaunt, but cleanly shaven. His eyes had dark circles around them as if he were tired, but he seemed quite energized. He then walked up to the counter. At that moment, I realized how tall this guy was. Like Kobe tall. I asked him what he would like to order. He just stared straight ahead as if he were zoning out. I repeated my question a bit louder. He only said one word. Coffee. The man then leaned down and looked me in the eye and asked me if I was alone. I told him I wasn't, that my manager was in the back room. He then pulled out a few crumpled up dollar bills, handed it to me, and then walked back out of the door without taking his coffee with him. As soon as he left the building, I felt this intense atmosphere lift up from around me. I was at a loss for words, to be honest. I quickly rushed to the back and told my manager about the whole situation, to which he told me to put the man's money aside in case he comes back for it. The next night, everything was back to normal. The usual customers sat in their respective seats, sipping their coffee. While I was keeping myself busy and mopping the floor, I couldn't help but think about the interaction I had last night. That's when I happened to look out of our front window, and I saw him. He was standing across the street under a streetlight. He was just standing there, staring at me. I turned to see if my manager was behind the counter, and when I looked back, he was gone. At that point, I was starting to feel unnerved. My last night working there was the worst by far, and also the reason I quit. I had arrived to work and relieved the people working before me. That's when I received a call from my manager telling me that he had a family emergency and would be a few hours late. I was upset, but there wasn't much I could do, so I just said alright. After three uneventful hours of me cleaning the same racks over and over again to keep my mind off things, I glanced out of the window once more. What I saw made my blood turn to ice. The man was standing on the other side of the window. He was grinning at me with a sinister smile that caused my body to seize up. Right away, I pulled out my cell phone and called the police. While my phone was ringing, the man did something strange. Without peeling his eyes from the glass, he pulled out a cell phone from his pocket. I watched him carefully as he began to type something into the phone without even looking at it. At that moment, my phone buzzed, notifying me of a text. The message said, Now you're alone. <laughs> 